when we are fighting with climate change intruding saline waters in the territories we need to explore new options for agriculture definitely saline farming is one of such options in today's class we would understand a case study from gujarat but before understanding the regional case study let's understand the global examples where this farming technique has been highly successful and two good examples are one from netherland the other from mekong delta now let's first understand so far why we were not considering saline farming as a good option the only reason was salinity threatens the food production and therefore brings a insecurity then why do we now think about converting saline areas into farming the foremost reason is the land is getting degraded the land land quality is getting affected and therefore we need to retrieve areas where farming can be done or we need to bring in areas where salinity even with salinity we are able to do good agriculture so bio saline agriculture as it is called as in the context of climate change is a one very good example which brings in climate resilient agricultural practices and with these climate resilient agricultural practices even the salt affected areas can prosper now why do we think in india this is one of the major concerns specifically in the areas of gujarat and rajasthan in the regions of gujarat the kutch area and then we have in the regions of rajasthan the salt water lakes both of these areas are the areas where salinity is relatively higher now as understanding this project in european union there is a project which is selfar selfar is a project of european union north sea region development and in this european region north sea uh, development we have seen that there are seven predominant economies obviously those economies are norway sweden denmark uk germany belgium and netherlands in the regions touching the north sea area and in these areas we have seen that selfar with selfar salinity and bringing in agriculture with salinity has been a commendable uh, performance over the last 15 years if we say from 1930 1993 to 2017 it's around 3 inches of water level rise now with 3 inches of global sea level rise we understand how much saline intrusion is there and to understand this Uh, in one of the studies in european union it has been quoted that nearly 1 to 3 million hectares of the land is affected directly or indirectly by salinity and the related issues now with these there is a possibility to generate farming options within within these saline areas this can be brought by four important aspects first is what crop to choose and what should be the best choice of crop the second is the agriculture uh, the irrigation potential in those areas and what irrigation would be best the third is the issue with fertilizers and the fourth is how a good soil management can be done so these four issues are the issues that would determine whether a saline farming would be a good a uh, proposition for that region or not to begin with the first one what crops to introduce so we have seen that beans are one of the crops that die even if once the one tenth of the salinity of the oceans is present that means what kind of crops would be good fit only those crops which are succulent which are halophytes can grow well now there have been studies suggested by various scholars like hoffman mars who have said that salt tolerant species can grow with two parameters one is the threshold and the other is the slope now threshold of the salinity uh, is the level at which the yield starts to become negatively affected and slope is the degree at which the yield decreases as the salinity increases so as the salinity would increase the yield would decrease and that is what is called called as the slope now the next is irrigation 
both fresh water as well as brackish water or salty water would reduce evapotranspiration now here we have some list of soil which is the sandy soil versus the clay soil and where you have a good salinity versus no salinity so if it is a sandy soil with no salinity definitely the conventional agricultural practices have good probability with fresh water irrigation but in a sandy soil which is high salinity both fresh water and salt water irrigation can be done however in a clay soil which has salinity or not uh, salt ir water irrigation is not at all recommended now therefore it is very very important to keep soil moisture nearly constant in the soil for all possible reasons when you are irrigating with brackish water or salty water it is important that you irrigate enough so that the salt do not accumulate into layers but is drained in the deeper soil so it's not just the upper layers where the salt should accumulate but it should go deeper into the layer so preferable drainage system of brackish water should be designed in that order similarly in a sandy soil if there is irrigation we need to understand that structural problems are very important structural problems specifically with clay soil because in clay soil the percolation would be less and since the percolation would be less the salt would get accumulated on the top layers and therefore irrigating with salt water becomes difficult so irrigation can be best done in that case using drip irrigation method drip irrigation would be considered as one of the most efficient ways the next efficient way here would be uh, flood flood irrigation uh, flood irrigation would be applicable when there is drying out of the soil and this would take place mainly in the areas where you have a sandy soil because drying out becomes relatively faster the next is fertilizers now fertilizers increase what fertilizers increase the osmotic stress since the osmotic stress of the crop or the associated crop is increased this is highly associated with the salinity now it is important to take into account that if the osmotic stress uh, is affected the electrical conductivity would be affected and if the electrical conductivity is high in the saline water then fertilizers definitely become a big problem so salinity obviously leads to deficiency of the crops in certain um, fields and certain minerals and therefore soil in these areas should be rich in organic matter even if the salinized soil requires additives we need to elevate that osmotic stress first and then bring in suitable options which can be brought now let's understand some of the case studies so management again is involving the issues of finding a right crop the suitable crop the suitable irrigation the suitable fertilizers now let's understand the case study of gujarat as i said in gujarat recently there was a news clipping which said that there would be a center of excellence which would be brought by dutch and gujarat government and this would be a way through which the areas specifically in the kutch area where you have lot of saline intrusion farming could become possible if we talk about dutch the netherlands we have 27% of the land below sea level now since there is 27% of the land which is below sea level understanding a right way of farming through saline farming becomes important some of the crops which have been greatly identified which can flourish well in saline soil is potatoes uh frozen potatoes the frozen chain potatoes are good example then we have vegetable products certain dairy products uh cabbage beetroot strawberry are some of the good examples that can be brought with saline agriculture uh carrot tomato uh can be brought in the saline area now the similar case study we have is from mekong now mekong delta farmer used to actually harvest rice twice a year when the fresh water is available but uh, during the dry season the river flows uh, at a very low volume 
and since it flows at a low volume there is lots and lots of salt water intrusion from the sea water into the river body and this goes up to the area of 40 kilometers inland so where the mekong river falls you have nearly 40 kilometers inside you can see that there are saline intrusions when the uh, river is running low in volume now this led to a need that salt tolerant species should be introduced and since salt tolerant species would be introduced there could be better opportunities through which farming could be done interesting to note when we talk about farming the first thing comes to our mind is crops what we could eat but it's not just the crops that we can eat even in saline water we can do farming which can be good as a fuel wood which can be used as fuels. So salt tolerant trees and shrubs could be grown which can provide fuel wood. So prosopis is a good example. We have temerix is another good example. Uh, similarly salvadora is another uh, good example of fuel wood. This can provide good quality of wood which can be used for various activities. All, also charcoal production can be done. Similarly, there are certain species through which we can obtain soda, which can be used in soap making industry, glass making industry. Uh, economic concerns are primary. So it's not just the agricultural crops which can be consumed by human beings. We are not just focusing on, only on those crops, but also on those crops that could be used as fossil wood. Uh, fossil wood, those could be used in charcoal production, soap industry, glass industry, or varied other industries besides the edible industry or the food industry. So that's one important thing. And the next important, the very important thing is with saline agriculture, we have seen that there is a potential to significantly reduce carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere specifically in the salt affected areas because there is more cropping which is done and this would ultimately reduce the amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So the whole thing revolves around certain important issues. What are those? The first is how would you reclaim the salt affected areas? Once you have reclaimed those salt affected areas, how would you maintain that there is a, a constant level of salinity? And also, once the drainage is there, how would you reuse it? So those are, uh, so how would you reuse the drainage installation systems and see that even the drainage systems are not affected by the salinity problems. They are not, the, uh, the, the installations and the mechanisms are not blocked by the brackish water. So those are some of the important concerns that we must have in mind before we discuss this issue. But as mentioned, this is a new innovative approach in farming. Definitely uh, new areas have to be explored with climate change and environmental change taking place uh, with agricultural uh, options we need to explore new venues new avenues and this can be one of the very important topics even for your answer writing case studies as we said uh, the contemporary topics that you listen in news which you read in news become important and this is how you can uh, substantiate your answer writing with so this was about one of the major case studies and one of the major studies on saline farming a very important topic uh, we would be coming up with many such interesting topics. Stay tuned for further updates. Have a wonderful day ahead.